I've got an email here from Jeff, and he wants to change the parameters of Guess the Program, is what he wants to do, because he has sent a clipping, and uh, he wants you, Brian, he wants me to read. You know, normally when, when we play Guess the Program on your show, at least that's the fun part of it, uh, you read a lineup, and I have to try to guess the location and the date, right? Well, he wants to change the parameters here where I read you a clipping and you have to guess the location and the date of guess the wreck, guess the car accident. How's that sound? I didn't know we were working for Jeff now. Who the hell is this Jeff guy Jeff, sending in new a, parameters? Stick it up your ass, he's Jeff. A, he's a friend of mine and, and he's come up oh. with some parameters. He's a friend now. It changes everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's a good close personal friend. Listen to this now. Tell me where this was and when it was. Professional wrestler Tommy Wildfire Rich has been found guilty in municipal court on a reduced charge stemming from a March 30th auto accident. Rich, 26, of Jonesboro, Georgia, entered a no-contest plea Wednesday afternoon to a charge of failure to control. He was originally charged with operating a motor vehicle while intoxicated. City prosecutor Craig Mayton asked the court to reduce the charge because the evidence did not support the original citation. Apparently, Mayton said a blood test revealed Rich's blood alcohol level was 0.062%, which is below the 0.1% level set by state law. It's an imposter. As being intoxicated. Well, I'm thinking that <laughs> this was Tommy in just his normal walking around mode. And now they have lowered the <laughs> the the limits to 0. 0.8 most places, but he was still under that. But it's hey, normal. Hey, I'm fine. I can walk straight line. Well, hold on. <laughs> Here, hold on about that comment. Uh -oh. um, but now, in addition, Maiden said the test concluded that Rich was not taking any other drugs at the time, so they must have caught him on a good day. But Maiden <laughs> said the investigating state trooper reported Rich had some problems with balance. <laughs> the, the prosecutor said he was informed that Rich does have an ear problem, which affects his balance. But apparently, uh, the accident occurred while Rich and, and fellow wrestler Tony Atlas, 28, of California, were returning to this place after a wrestling match in the other place. Atlas was hospitalized for three days at Grady Memorial Hospital with minor injuries received in the mishap. Wow. R Rich's attorney said the accident occurred in Kingston Township when a tire blew out. The car went out of control and flipped over in the median strip. And oh, Judge Taylor Jesus fined Christ. Rich $25 on the reduced charge. So $25? Yes. <laughs> but now here was the... Here was the kicker. Jeff in his email said, my dad brought Tony Atlas in for an independent show years later. He asked Atlas about this accident. You know where you and Tommy Rich flipped over the median and you wound up in the hospital. And Tony indicated that he'd have to be more specific. <laughs> oh, wow. But uh, where, wh what do we, what did, were we just talking about here recently? What were we just talking? Th that's a loaded question. We do four hours couple well, times a week. What do you mean? What were okay, we just talking remember about? remember when they were talking about the rental car and should we damage oh, yeah. the rental car? And I said, what did I say? I said, Tommy Rich, when they started doing the Ohio towns, the story I got was that he wrecked so many of the rental cars, they wouldn't rent to the wrestlers anymore. Well, this was Columbus, Ohio. They were returning from a wrestling match in Akron in 1982, which is when they had opened up. Well, that was my guess. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so well, you didn't want to play anyway. I was going to guess 82, but I wouldn't have guessed. Yeah. I would have guessed either Georgia or Ohio. I didn't know for sure. Yeah, the, but uh, they were returning to Columbus after a match in Akron, and and I guarantee you that was a rental car that ended up upside down in the median. So they maybe not point. the first time. No, no, I would think that was because they had opened up really in 81. They started going up there, didn't they, or did they? We have a... I we have someone trying to make a claim. They said that they flipped their car over in a median and it threw a passenger out named Tony Atlas. No, we already did that one last week. No, this is a new one. Yeah. No. <laughs> Same guys. 
Same guy he went out the side this time instead of through the windshield. Why would you get in a car with him again? It's like, it's not like the thing where the plane crash won't happen twice to the same person, so sitting next to Flair makes you safe. After Tommy Rich goes into his first ditch or flips over the median, why would you ever go in a car with him again? Well, no, but uh, Buddy Landell, most of the time <laughs> I loved him. Most of the time I loved him. Sometimes, he, you know, it, it was it was hard. Uh, but when we first went to Louisiana, it was the four of us, me and Bobby and Buddy and Dennis that would rotate each, every four days, a new guy's car, right? Is what I'm trying to say. Rotate to drive it. And you'd pay whoever was riding with a guy in his car, you'd pay him trance. It was 10 cents a mile, I believe. In there. Or was it five cents? Five, 10 cents, whatever. Anyway, so Buddy Landell was the worst, most distracted driver and just paid no attention and would talk and would look in the mirror and comb his hair and do whatever he was doing and speed or be aggressive or just any trait that you could possibly not want in your person driving your car buddy had it and finally he made me so nervous i and i'm trying to think now what the what the breaking point was where i just said buddy i'm i'm i can't ride with you anymore and i just told him i said if you know because dennis is like no he's he's supposed to drive one out of each of these four days right that was a big deal back in those days you do your share of driving and Dennis didn't want to let him off that easy. I was like, well, I will drive myself when you guys are riding with Buddy, right? Because fuck it, I can't do it anymore. It makes me too nervous. And the first week that I started that policy, I went to fucking Jackson, Mississippi. And I left earlier than they did. But when I got there, I sat down in the locker room. And then who what in came... God damn, it was Carl Fergie. Maybe Carl Fergie and Pat Rose, maybe, or whatever. The point is, they had come from Alexandria also and had been driving down a road about 50 miles out of Alexandria. And they looked over and saw a car off the side of the road down a hill in a bunch of fucking mud. And there was God... And Dundee was in the car, too. It was Dundee. And in the mud, knee-deep was... Bobby Eaton, Dennis Condry, and Buddy Landell. His car is off the fucking... He slid off the road. I can't even remember what car... He caused it by not being a, a attentive driver, but they're in the goddamn mud, right? In the muck, in the Louisiana bayou. And they said, can you help us out of here? And he said, fuck you, we can't get... They wouldn't let them in the car in their condition with all the mud and everything where they'd got out of the car and it's all... They said, well, call ahead. So they called somebody of fucking at the next town. They got the goddamn gas station, whatever. I can't remember the details because obviously I wasn't even there. But they were like an hour late by the time they got out of there and got cleaned off and got somebody to fucking drag their car. And the car wasn't disabled. It just needed to be drug out and got back on the road. And that was the first fucking trip that Buddy was captain of their ship without me as i say, and pretty soon it became buddy ended up just riding with one of the three of us there was a story way back on the show i told that i had heard from buddy landell himself about buddy crashing into about butch reed hitting butch. buddy's car and then buddy said his eye flew out and then you said where did you hear that story that's not what happened <laughs> i said buddy landell was who i heard it from is when did that happen that was later on that summer. That was that su I know it was 84, yeah. but was it in the summer? Okay. Be because when, well, when Buddy first, Buddy, we were like the first ones to come from Memphis, as you'll recall. And then I said the rock and roll got in and Buddy showed up about the same time. So we'd already been there for a little while. And then Buddy got there and they were just using him, you know, in the middle or whatever. And he was riding with us to help us fight our way back from the ring in some of these towns. But then... Dundee got the idea of, of, of Butch and Buddy being a thing, and that was later on toward the, the summer, so Butch and Buddy started either riding together a lot or if they would follow each other if Butch, because Butch still lived in Baton Rouge, 120 miles from Alexandria. So basically, but Butch took over Buddy Watch, and, you know, we had 
the three of us in a car at that point, and that's when Buddy's car wreck started involving Butch. And yeah, Butch ran into Buddy only because Buddy just rear-ended at a dead fucking, well, I say a dead run. He was going like 25 miles an hour through Bunky, Louisiana, on, on the main street through Bunky with stoplights and traffic and <laughs> goddamn, you know, the stores are open. And he saw, a, I think the story was, he saw a pretty girl on a sidewalk and grabbed his hairbrush and was brushing his hair at her and not looking in front of him when a light changed and somebody stopped and he just, bam, right into him. And then Butch was following Buddy, so bam, he went into fucking Buddy. Well, then, goddamn it. It was Buddy's head that hit the, either the windshield or the steering wheel and busted him open. He's got juice running down his fucking head. But Butch maybe also had not been as attentive as he might have been to hit Buddy because he was apparently doing a fucking bump of cocaine at the same time and wasn't paying attention because his cocaine spilled all over the goddamn floorboard on the driver's side. So then Buddy fucking realizes it's Butch that's hit him, even though he's dazed and confused and bleeding. And he opens his door and he staggers out. And he, I don't know if it was goddamn, you know, some poor, innocent, middle-aged woman sitting there in the front car or whoever it was they hit. But Buddy's first thought is to go back and see if fucking ex-NFL pro football player bodybuilder Butch Reed has survived this accident. And he sees Butch on his knees. Butch's door is open and Butch is on his knees. His feet are sticking out in the street. He's on his knees outside the car, but his head's inside the car. And Buddy comes over. He's like, Butch, Butch, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And he's leaning over and Butch is like, God damn it, Buddy, you're bleeding on my fucking shit. He's, Buddy's bleeding on his cocaine that he's trying to gather up on the floorboard of the car before somebody else walks up which is why he's not down selling. He's down scooping up Bolivian marching powder. And it, so Buddy bled all over Butch's cocaine as well as all over his dashboard of his car and the inside of fucking Butch's goddamn car door is hanging open. And then that's when one of the boys, well, it was Dundee again because he was the booker. He had heard they somehow managed to get a phone call to the Mississippi Gulf Coast Coliseum in Biloxi. And Dundee comes in the heel locker room and says, Well, Butch and Budrow, Butch and Budrow, Butch and Budrow, I'll say to you, Butch. Well, I'm trying to do the accent at the same time. Imagine in an Australian accent, Butch and Budrow have been in an accident. And we said, Who'd they hit? And he said, Each other. And I don't think they I don't think they made the show that night, to be honest with you, because their cars were fucked up and Buddy had to get his head stitched and You know, it's a really underrated idea from Dundee, because you never hear anyone really rave about it being his idea, but putting Butch with Buddy works so well on TV. What were they like together off camera? The same way. That's why he did it. Because Buddy would fucking be Buddy and Butch would try to take the piss out of him in the locker room and and all it, it was like the, the that era's version of ron simmons's damn where and and butch was obviously the leader and buddy booty <laughs> and booty <laughs> that's what bill dundee called them loss of blood <laughs> folks and buddy <laughs> would follow him around and you know buddy <laughs> wanted to be the fucking <laughs> wanted to be the star at anybody's expense but he was you know acting like a stooge to 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 booch <laughs> and it, but it was great, and and they were naturally like that anyway. All right, well, that was a tale of Buddy and Butch and Buddy Bloon and Butch and, and Falco. Yeah, <laughs> and Ploon. And Ploon. From Apple Dune. Falco, not Falco. No, it was, it was... His name was Falco. Oh, I thought you said Funko. No. No, that's a pop. No, it's not a pop. They make pop. All right, no, Funko. Funko, Funko makes Funko Pops. Pop. Yeah, yes. it's, it's not a pop, though. In well, the they are. It's, sense a, of the it's word. a brand of pop. Pops. What do you consider a pop? A pop. What's a pop? One of those pops with what the big is... head. They call it the Funko Pop. Well, it's kind of a figure Just like J.D. Slash... Funko. Well, you call them that, but 
Well, it's because they're the top of the pops. That's why they He's, call him you know that. What? He may be the one in Judgment Day I like the most at this point, J.D. Funko. Yeah, well, yeah, because... He, everything he does looks good. The other ones have fallen off greatly in our estimation, except for our girl, Rhea. But anyway, it was, it was Fulco, not Falco, who did After the Fire, first at least... No, they didn't do after the fire. No, that was the, see, I don't know and why you after, decided to go through the history and then you messed it up right well, away. Well, see, I messed it up again <laughs> because we couldn't figure out whether whether Falco did putting on the Ritz, but that was Taco. 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 But Falco was the one who did Der Commissar before after the fire, but it wasn't Falco we were talking about. It was Fulco, who was the husband of, of Plune, and they were from Appledurn in the Netherlands. And I am Oli, and he is Sven. And, uh, uh, but anyway, where were we going with this? Nowhere. Uh, you mentioned these people. You mentioned these people. and brought Oh, it Jeff. Up to Thank me. you, Jeff. That's where we were going. Thank you, Jeff, for your email. Well, that was a while ago. 